Today, I wanted to compare the Leica GS18i GNSS receiver with their older GS15 GNSS receiver. And we'll be putting these receivers head to head to a traditional surveying total station. Now, both of these receivers are capable of achieving centimeter level accuracy when using them for surveying and mapping. So the GS15 was released in 2009. That's 15 years ago. And the GS18, the first iteration of it was released in 2017. And this one is even newer given the tilt compensation capabilities as well as the built-in camera capable of capturing imagery and helping us aid in our work. So with a nine year age difference, is there a performance upgrade to the 18 versus the 15? An even more interesting question is if I were to update my GS15 to the latest firmware, would the performance be better than an outdated GS18. Let's go ahead and find out. So I've set up six control points throughout the site. Some of them are in the open and some of them are next to trees. We've also got an NGS survey monument on the front of the site. So a total of seven points to test and to see the accuracy of the GS18 with an old firmware, a GS15 with a new firmware, and a GS18 with a new firmware. And to ensure accuracy for all of the points that we measure, I'm going to be ground truthing all of this data using a surveying total station. Let's go ahead and set up this total station. Right, now that I've set up the total station, let's go into Leica Captivate where I'm going to set up the job by establishing our known point and back sighting our NGS monument. So for the point ID, I have point 101. This is our point of occupation. We measured this again with the GS18 just so that we can get geodetic coordinates. For the instrument height, I can just click on measure height and the TS16 actually will automatically measure the height of the instrument. So I don't need to pull out a tape and measure it manually. It'll do it automatically for me. Coming in at 5.092 feet. For the back site point, I'm going to select point number 102. That would be the NGS monument. I'll say okay. For the target height, I'm going to have the height of of our prism and right now I have it set to 6.07 feet. Okay and so now I'm gonna pick up and walk a little bit further away from the total station and I'm going to tell it to search and find me. Lock to target. Perfect. All right, now we'll head all the way down to the NGS monument. Okay, and so our horizontal is within four hundredths of a foot and our vertical is about seven hundredths of a foot. I'm gonna go ahead and accept these conditions and establish our setup. All right, now let's head over to point 103. All right, we're set up here on point number 103. We'll take a distance. Point stored. Perfect, let's head to 104. Okay, it's point 104 and we're going to measure. Point stored. All right, now let's head over to point number 105. All right, here we are, 105. Okay, good. It looks like the total station lost us, so we'll have it power search for us. Lock the target. Okay, and we will store. Point stored. Cool, all right, we got two more, 106 and 107. All right. Here's 106, and we'll go ahead and hit measure. Point stored. Cool, one last point, 107. All right, 107, and measure. Point stored. Awesome, and all these points will be used as our baseline measurements when we compare everything to the GNSS receivers. All right, so now let's switch over and check out the GS18i using an older firmware. If any of this stuff interests you or you're looking to expand on your survey knowledge, then you've got to check out the surveyschool.com. Here you'll find a plethora of resources from coursework to coaching calls or even online community posts and forums where you can connect with the largest growing survey community online. Check out the surveyschool.com and I look forward to interacting with each and every one of you. All right, so we're going to start by collecting data with the GS18 running an older firmware. So I'm going to start with point number 102. This is the monument point and because I'm using a GS18, I don't need a bipod. I can just hold my rod like this and it'll automatically correct the position thanks to the tilt compensation. Okay, and store. Let's head over to 103. And this is 103 and it looks like our RTK is fixed. So the 
GS18, despite having an older firmware, does do a really good job of maintaining a fixed reading under you know heavy vegetation. So go ahead and measure. Point stored. All right, let's go to point number 104. Okay, and this is 104. We still have a fixed reading, so that's good. And measure. Point stored. All right, let's go to 105. Okay, 105 and store. Point stored. Cool. All right. Do 106. Okay. This is 106 and store. Point stored. One more point. Right here. Point number 107 and store. Point stored. All right. Perfect. Okay. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. But this time we're going to be using the GS15, but with some updated firmware. So because I'm using the GS15, we don't have a built-in IMU. That is a piece of hardware. And so I won't be able to do tilt compensation like I normally do with a GS18. So we're gonna use a bipod legs like this to ensure that our rod is plumb. For this point here, gotta make sure the rod is plumb. So this will be point number 102. Measure. Okay, cool. Drop the legs. Okay, let's head over to 103. Okay, coming in here at 103. And set the point. Okay, I'm hoping to get our fixed reading here. Let's get the rod plumb, right? And I guess we'll just sit and wait until the RTK initializes. This is unfortunately older hardware, so even with the updated firmware, we're still gonna struggle more than the GS18. And come on, baby. Okay, perfect, there we go. Our RTK is fixed, so I'm going to hit measure and then store. Point stored. All right, let's head over to point 104. RTK, Okay, expected. It's gonna be a little rough here again. Hopefully it won't take as long. Come on, baby, you could do it. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Measure. Point stored. All right, good. All right, let's head over to 105. 105, so bulky. Working with this bipod. RTK initialized. Ooh, 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 hurry up, hurry up. All right, good. Okay, perfect. RTK is fixed. Measure. Point stored. All right, point stored. And now we'll go to point 106. Okay, so we're gonna go over to 106. Measure. Point stored. Okay, and then we'll head over to 107. Okay. Looks like we still have fix, 107, measure. Point stored. All right, perfect. All right, now that we've finished collecting data using the GS15, it's time to remove the bipod and put the GS18 back on, but this time with an updated firmware. Now next week on September 24th to the 26th, I'm going to be traveling to Stuttgart, Germany to attend InterGeo 2024. Last year we had a great opportunity to connect with Hexagon as well as other companies in the surveying and geospatial world. And I'm excited to be attending again this year. If you're looking for a free exhibit hall pass, then be sure to use promo code IG24-RAMI. I'm Peter Zane, and I hope to see you all at Energio 2024. We got till compensation back. All right, and measure. Point stored. Perfect. Let's go to 103. And here's the point. They still have a fixed reading. That just tells you how impressive the GS18 is. I'm gonna go ahead and measure. Point stored. Okay. Head over to 104. And this is... 104 and measure. Point okay, head over to 105. And this right here should be 105. Okay, and measure. Point stored. All right, got two more points. Here's 106, measure. Point stored. Okay, one last point. Here's 107 and measure. Point stored. All right, we're done. All right, so I'm going to now process all of the data that we collected on the GS18 old firmware, the GS15 new firmware, as well as the GS18 new firmware, and we're gonna compare all of the coordinates to what we got with the TS16 total station. All right, and so here are the results for all of the sensors, both GS18s and the GS15. I've gone ahead and converted all of these coordinates from grid to ground to match the coordinates of the total station. And here we have the GS18 with the old firmware, the GS15 running the new firmware, 
as well as the GS18 with the new firmware. And so the main questions are, what are the advantages of having upgraded hardware? Is it necessary to upgrade your hardware? And what kind of improvements can we see with just upgrading our software? To answer this, I have calculated the root mean square error for all of the sensors in comparison to the TS16 total station. Here in these three columns, we have the squared error of the X, Y, and Z components. And in this column, I have the summation of those errors to calculate the root mean square error of the GS18 with the old firmware, the GS15 with the new firmware, and the GS18 with the new firmware. And so with the GS18 with the old firmware, we had an RMSE of 0.226 feet, or about 6.9 centimeters. With the GS15, we had an error of 0.197 feet, or about 6 centimeters. So we can see that there has been an improvement in the accuracy just by updating the firmware of our older GNSS receiver. They have to remember that the hardware itself in the field was less efficient. We didn't have an IMU for a tilt compensation, so that means we had to use a bipod to level our pole precisely. Not to mention that the GS15 did struggle a little bit more with maintaining RTK corrections in areas that had heavier tree coverage. But once we had RTK and our pole was leveled, we can clearly see that there was an improvement in accuracy thanks to having that upgraded firmware. And if we look at the RMSE of the GS18 with the new firmware, we can see we've got 0.191 feet or about 5.8 centimeters. Now a special thanks to Leica Geosystems for sponsoring today's video. Also a special thanks to Ted Miller for coming out to Michigan and helping me with this experiment. Make sure you check out the survey school and be a part of the fastest growing survey community online. Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.